One of the more common pieces of advice you will get from anyone who has ever played Football Manager is that you can't keep changing your tactic week after week. Well, we have played six games since the World Cup, we have scored three goals, and we have conceded six. Screw that advice, I have designed a new tactic from scratch once again. What's up guys, it's Jochen aka Leo Demus here with part 22 of Stuttgart über alles. In this FM21 series, I try and transform Vau of B Stuttgart in Germany from a newly promoted Bundesliga club into a European giant. If you are interested in more videos like this, don't forget to show me some support by liking the video and subscribe to my channel, whack on that notification button so you won't miss a single thing. Well, since the last time you were here, which was of course A, the Basak Shihir game, which we have won, and B, the World Cup, we have done quite miserable, if you ask me. We have played three friendlies, although at that point some of our players were still at the World Cup. So I'm not saying we played our strongest squad, but nonetheless, we have lost all three of them. We scored zero goals. And it was just awful to see. I did twiddle around with some tactics in those friendlies. But still, man, I mean, Atletico Madrid, okay. It is a big team, a tough opponent. But the other two, we should be capable of beating them. Now, let's leave the friendlies for what they are. Then we had three league games coming up. First of which was at home against Wolfsburg. We drew 1-1 which is not a bad result because Wolfsburg are a good team. Then we went to Werder Bremen, we also drew 0-0. It was a miserable game without any highlights. I mean, sometimes you just have a game like that. Well, that was one. And then we kind of redeemed ourselves because we had the very hard away game at Bayer Leverkusen and we have beaten them 2-1. Let's have a look at these match stats. And as you can see, spoiler about the tactic, by the way, but as you can see, Bayern Leverkusen was in fact the better team. They had more possession with 63%. Yeah, so I think we kind of got lucky, if you will, because Agilov scored in the 94th minute in extra time to give us the three points. But I'm not complaining, but I'm just trying to tell you that it wasn't the prettiest game at all. Now today we will play Hamburg in the cup. Remember, if we win this game, we are taking the board requirement because they want us to reach the quarterfinal, which is the round after the third round. So hopefully we can make something happen away at Hamburg. If we have a look at the league table, we are doing pretty okay. We have 31 points out of 18 games. We have a game in hand on Hoffenheim and Frankfurt. We are above Bayern Munich, which is normally always a good sign when you are playing in the Bundesliga. Uh, but yeah, I think we're doing okay. We are halfway through the season. Things are looking pretty bright. Our opponents in today's episode, Hamburg, are in 13th position with 22 points. But then again, I mean Bayern Leverkusen, although they have a couple of games in hand, are below Hamburg. So, hmm... I'm not sure what to expect. I think a lot, if not everything, will depend on my tactic. As I told you in the intro, I got pretty fed up with the tactic that I was running. It is still the 4-3-2-1 go nuts tactic, but I have tweaked and turned it. You don't even want to know. So I didn't really create a new tactic from scratch. But it's basically the same thing because I have tweaked it so much there is not that much left from our previous tactic, but bear with me. Now let me kind of tell you my mindset for creating this particular tactic. I think in Football Manager 2021, there are two things that can really help you get be successful if you are managing a club. If you are managing Liverpool, for example, 
I, I can I think we can all agree that it doesn't matter that much because you have such a world class team at your disposal that you have a lot of tactical wiggle room. In my opinion, let me know in the comment section, by the way, if you agree or disagree, let's talk about it. But I think on the condition that you are not managing a world class team as Liverpool, you can do two things to help increase your success. One is play a target man and play him well. For example, you could put him here on a, on a supportive duty, surrounded by two shadow strikers, for example, or even like this, two inside forwards on attack with a supporting target man. I think works really well. I played a target man a lot in FM20 and I can guarantee you it didn't work out for me last year. So I think they kind of tweaked the target man role. Maybe it's even overpowered in FM21. I am not sure. Once again, let me know down in the comment section what you think. But that being said, we don't really have a player that can play that well as a target man. We had Wamangituka, but he is out on loan. I'm not gonna recall him just for that, but just know that that is the reason, probably, why I am at this point in this new tactic not playing a target man. If it stays like this, and I'm liking this tactic and it actually gives us some results, a target man might become one of my main focal points in the summer transfer window. The second thing I think you can do to improve results is to play an asymmetrical tactic. Like this, for example, we, have, we do have an inside forward on attack on both sides of the pitch, but on the left hand side there is a huge gap and then we have a, a fullback on automatic duty, so he will kind of, when it suits him, because he's on automatic duty, Fill this gap, but on the right side of the pitch, we have an immediate supportive position for that inside forward in the form of a supporting winger. Behind him is a fullback on defense, so he will stay back most of the time, at least that are the instructions. If he's going to do it, that's another thing, but those are the instructions. Salamakas as a supportive winger, and right in front of him, Gonzalez as an inside forward. Now, as far as individual instructions go, I didn't really set it up that much. Roam from position for both inside forwards because I really want them to be an attacking force, but I don't want them to necessarily limit their movement to those positions. They can roam a little bit, I don't care, because my advanced playmaker and my deep lying playmaker both have the hold position instruction. So, I want this to be a more solid and stationary force in the midfield, if that makes sense, with kind of a roaming force in front of them in the form of two inside forwards and of course our pressing forward. The winger kind of is like an in-betweeny in this tactic. I didn't set anything up because I think Salamakas is good enough to make his own decisions. Simple as that. As far as defense goes, that's pretty simple. We have a fullback on automatic duty, like I said, on the left side of the pitch. On the right side of the pitch, he is on defensive duty because he has a winger in front of him. This winger will probably also attack, although he is on supportive duty, but he will be gone a lot. And I don't want the fullback also doing the overlap. That's basically why I've set uh, Hendricks or the fullback in general on the right side on defensive duty. In the center of the pitch, we have two normal central defenders. One is on cover duty, the other one is on defensive duty. I'm not using any ball playing defenders anymore because I just saw in all those games I played off camera that we are giving away possession a lot by lumping the ball forward. And it most of the time happens when one of these two defenders has the ball, there are playmakers open. They are asking for the ball, but the defenders, the ball playing defenders, simply decide to kick it away. And I don't want that, to be honest. I want them to be very, very simple with their passing. So I normally, I forgot it, I see now, I put it on shorter passing, hold position, tackle harder and mark, mark tighter. And the same goes for this guy. Shorter passing, hold position, mark tighter, tackle harder. And that's about it. I could even take, take fewer risks because this concerns passing. You know what? I'm just going to do it. Bam. 
So basically what I want is if my defenders have the ball, especially in the center of the field, I want them to do a simple short pass to one of two they can choose now. They have two playmakers in front of them. Two on Zebe, or even, normally this is Tonali, but two on Zebe is a very decent player in this position and role. So they have two playmakers in front of them. They can choose who to give the ball to. And I, for the love of God, hope that they will actually do that. So that is the asymmetrical tactic. I could even do this. Um, like this. But I am not sure because it is pretty crowded on this wing. We have basically three guys on the right wing and two on the left wing. So I think for now, I am going to let Tuanzebe stay in the middle. I could even do this, but this seems a bit ridiculous. Um, I'm going to set him in the middle because I really don't want him to neglect his left side because I think this is where we will be most vulnerable. Now, as far as team instructions go, for the in possession tab, I didn't tweak that much. I focused my play down the right simply because we have an overload of wing players here. Um, standard passing, standard slightly higher tempo, which is standard, sometimes time wasting, mixed crosses, uh, play for set pieces, and be more disciplined. Seems logical, right? For the in transition tab, we counter press, we counter attack when we win possession and we distribute the ball to the playmaker. He can even choose which one, but for the love of God, do not distribute it to my center backs. That is basically all I'm asking of my keeper. And in the out of possession tab, we are using the offside trap because we have pretty fast uh, defenders and we have one defender, the left one, on cover duty. So I think we should be okay. That's also why we are using a higher defensive line and we use a standard line of engagement. So we basically have a small uh, field as far as depth goes, but we are forcing the opposition outside. I'm not sure, man. I really hope this is going to work. We are strong in the middle of the pitch. We are getting most of the time getting hammered on the wings. So I hope just by pushing them to the outside, we can like also keep the ball out. I'm not sure. Once again, let me know down in the comment section what you think about this tactic. Because as I told you last time, I could use some help. Now last episode, I did tell you that we were signing Musa Wagwe while he is at the club by now. So meet Mr. Musa. 24 year old right wing back can also play on the other side of the pitch. It's pretty darn fast. Acceleration, agility, pace and stamina are right up there. He's very talented. He is not the youngest, but he certainly has some room to grow. So I think I signed him as a squad player for 2 million, which is insanity for this guy. I'm expecting a lot from him, although he has to be a little better to actually be a starter. Apart from him, there is one transfer going on, so to speak, because uh, Hertha Berlin have made an offer for Lilian Egloff. And he is one of our best young talents. He was already at the club, by the way, when I joined. He is one of the best talents and he can play on both sides of the pitch as an inside forward, basically. So mm, I could really use him. And if we look at the role and the position and all that he is in right now, he's inside forward on attack on the left side of the pitch because he is right footed. As you can see, he is very fast and agile. He has high determination. His dribbling is awesome. His finishing could be better as an inside forward. But you can't have it all, right? So to be honest, I do not want to sell this guy. This is the offer that Hertha Berlin put in. But what worries me most is my client's preferred destination would be Hertha Berlin. So I am not sure if I reject, simply reject this, that he is going to get mad at me. I do not want that because we are finally free of all those divas. And one of you gave me a tip that they, they simply said, negotiate the offer or make it non-negotiable. That was the tip. Make it a lot higher so you basically you know that they won't accept it and make it non-negotiable because then the other club is kind of withdrawing 
out of the negotiations and you can say, well, I tried, but the other club didn't want you in the end. I could try that. So mm, let's see. Let's put this. What is he valued at? 3.4 million. Potential value in excess of 9 million. Well, let's put this to uh, 10 million for starters. Installments to 7.5 million. And I want this out of here. And I want the percentage of the whole next sale of 50%. 17 and a half million to be fair if I get that for Lilian Engloff mm, I am very tempted to let him go so let's say non-negotiable and let's say negotiate offer boom all righty let's see what we can do against Hamburger SV in the cup tactical meeting please wow uh, a lot of advice, positive to defensive. I don't want that. I want to play positive football and I want to be in control of the game. Sorry, Mr. Assistant Manager. Let's see. For changes, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Focus play down the right. Um, I believe removing this instru instruction would help us exploit our strength on the left side of the pitch. Okay. Let's try that, I guess. Drop deeper, suiting the defensive approach we should be looking to use in this match. You know what, for once, let's just follow the guy and go to our team selection. Now we do have some injuries and Anton is out on international duty. Uh, Salvio is still injured for a couple more days and Kovalenko and Ustakio are crawling back out of injury. Apart from them, I think we can pretty much put out our strongest squad. I am going to play Pazella, who is our captain, so I better play him, right? But I am going to play him instead of Amadozic, because Amadozic is on a high injury risk. But I basically now see that half my team is. So, what's the actual point? Um, yeah. I am going to do it like this, though. So, Ruben Blanco in goal. Sosa, Popov, Pazella and Hendricks as our back four. Tuan Zebe as our deep-lying playmaker. Tonali in front of him as our advanced playmaker. Egloff as an inside forward on the left. Salamakas and Gonzalez on the right wing. A lone striker, of course, Matias Arezzo. Okay, we have 11 players who are concerned with the tactic because they lack tactical familiarity, which is normal because, like I said, I have been tweaking and turning every single game. I know it's no bueno, but hey, um, I think... Apart from that, Popov is concerned. The formation could expose... How the hell can this formation expose us at the back? Explain it to me, Dennis. Because I don't know. Burak Inns appear to disagree. Team instructions, be more disciplined. Don't suit his player trait. Use outside of foot. Wow. Deal with it, man. Come on. Go to match. Oh, I, I really hope we can win this game, guys. I really do. We have Clinton Mola and Darko Churlinov, who are ex-Stuttgart players, by the way. Um, so yeah, they are probably going to want to kick our butts. So we better be prepared. Come on, lads. Show me what you can do to keep our run going. Pump fists. Bam. Um, do I have everything in place to tackle this game? Just to make sure, let's go to our tactics one last time. I think we do. Should I, though, put Tuan Zebe there? You know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to put him here so that basically all the space is filled. But I mean, really, tell me how this is exposing us at the back. Should I put him to defensive then? Should I? Or to support so that he at least cannot attack? You know what? I'm going to put it to the defensive. Which will leave a huge gap here, I think. But we will see where it gets us. Should I then maybe put him to support? You see what I'm doing? I'm already changing the tactic. We haven't played a single minute. Oh, let's keep it like this. Let's go to tunnel interview. Amadozic, oh, I did, did not mention this to you. He has signed a new contract, which is awesome. But it has a minimum fee release clause of 60 million. 
which I can live with if someone offers that for him. Um, so what is Joao Freitas asking me? Are you pleased at presumably being able to strengthen the club's position here because I gave him a higher minimum fee release clause? Well, I work with the guy every day and he couldn't be happier to be here. How pleased are you that Amadouzic has signed a new contract? Well, what do you think? Um, Anal is a player of the highest caliber and I think I speak for everyone. He is awesome. Come on, Stuttgart. Let me pause game and get my director view back on because this is the view I play off camera with because I want to see everything on the pitch. But I think for recording and for you guys, this is the one camera view to use. Play. Turn it off with the free kick. Mola heads it, but not powerful enough to beat Ruben Blanco. Come on. Ooh, Eglov is wide open, but... A poor dribble attempt, and that immediately means we, lo we lost possession. And that has been our problem since the beginning, man. We cannot play a possession-based tactic, even if I set everything up in those tactical instructions. For some reason, these players cannot do that. I don't know why, I don't know how. But Sosa is stealing the ball now. Come on, Agloff. Redeem yourself. Bam! Nope, weak shot, but hey, it is still nil-nil after 10 minutes. Could have been worse, right? Almost 25 minutes in and not that much is happening. Look at the possession. They have 63% possession. Tonali with the free kick, though, gets headed away and... Sweet mother of God, we are going to lose this. I can tell you right now, we are going to lose this freaking game. Mola with the ball to Koli. Awful marking. Popov kicks it away to absolutely no one. Onana now to Van Trongelen. Come on, man. Steal it. Just steal the freaking ball. Steal the freaking ball and launch a counterattack. That is all I am asking. Did I... Just to make sure, how is my pressing? It's more urgent. Tighter marking is there. We have a standard line of engagement and a standard defensive line because of the pre-game tactical instructions that I agreed with. I think that should be it. And we have tighter marking once again in every defensive player. But as you can see, that works out just wonderful, doesn't it? Oh god, we are 40 minutes in and did we have? We had the, the shot that uh, pause game, work, work ball into box. Agloff's shot was basically our only highlight, as you can see in our XG score. Boom, 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 boom. Dressing room, please. Um, and I have to be careful because I don't want to upset them as well. Let's give the fans something to cheer today. The most neutral thing you can say. Start second half. What should I shout? Maybe fire up. Uh, okay. Only Tuan Zebe likes that. Oh, no, and Hendricks also likes it. Oh, come on, man. Another very uneventful game. And I mean, this is... Pause game. This is like an attacking tactic, right? Am I the only... Is it me? Am I the only one not getting anything here? Because, I mean, come on. We have three players on attack. And Jack Bleep is happening. Come on. On man, what do I have to do? Should I untick this and instead go more expressive? I'm not gonna take anything. Let them decide. <sighs> I don't know what to do, guys. I'm sorry I keep repeating that, but I simply don't know it. And I'm gonna take Tanali off because I don't want him to get injured. Let's get Burak Ins on. And in a couple of minutes, I am going to put on one of those two youngsters, Olsen or Makarov. But we will see. Confirm changes. Let's start with this. Play ball. 70 minute mark. You know what? Let's just do our second substitution as well. Salamakas is coming off for Makarov. Let's have a quick look at his profile because he is 17, as I mentioned. Turned 17 in December. Is a right winger. He's right footed. He is very fast 
And like in general, his physicals are insane for a 17 year old. 17 natural fitness, mind you. Work rate of 15, dribbling and first touch are right up there. I am expecting a lot from this guy. And while we are doing it, let's also look at Olsen because it is a very similar profile, but this guy is left footed. So he's basically very well suited as the inside forward on the right side of the pitch. Um, but yeah, dribbling is more than okay. Technique 15, flair 16, also very fast like Makarov. One to keep an eye out for, that is for show. Um, all right, let's keep it at this. Makarov on the right wing. Confirm sub. Come on, man. 25, no, 15 minutes left. Oh, sweet mother of God. Here we go. And highlight for Hamburg. Ooh, good steal by Tuan Zebe. Gonzalez. Mm. We are 1-0 up, fourth goal only, and he, is, he has been injured for quite some time, but still. Uh, fourth goal of the season. Okay, let's not pause game, let's first look at the replay. Very good steal by Tuan Zebe, and an awesome ball to Gonzalez, who is very clinical, as usual. And now let's pause game, because I do want to go to my tactics and go to Cautious. We all know when you go to defensive or very defensive, you will concede a goal, right? So I'm going to go to Cautious. I'm going to swap him for um, Sobol. And that's basically all my substitutions right there. Confirm. Play ball. Come on. Five and something minutes left. Oh, God. A throw in for Sobol. To for the love of God, to absolutely not even close. Oh... Why, 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 why? Again, guys, if you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section. Because I am fresh out, to be honest. Look at this. Good steal, though, by Sobol to Egloff. Keep it in possession, guys. Keep the ball in our team. That is all I'm asking. Burak, risky ball again. To Gonzalez and Makarov should go for the overlap, to be honest, but doesn't. Um, nope, that's to absolutely no one. A long highlight. I am not liking him. That is awful defending. And for the love of humanity, I am so fed up with this game. I can hardly describe it. Uh, let's go to very attacking because I am tired of this BS. Look at this defender. Who is that? Fadzella. He's our captain. He's our most experienced defender. He's a good player. But this is simply... Sup bar man come on oh for the love of god uh shout demand more i don't even care if they like it or not highlight for sobol egloff <laughs> oh no, another highlight wow okay extra extra time to budak sobol now with the ball on the left side of the pitch come on guys if we score here we take a very important board requirement. Arezzo, is that offside? It's not offside. 13, yes, sir. Mm. 13 goal of the season. Let's go to very defensive immediately. But can you see what my frustration is? We, are, we win this game, probably, or things have to go horribly south. We win this game, but the way that we win this game is like beyond me. We are playing crappy football and it's not over yet. <laughs> I think that was it though. We are playing crappy football. Yes, we've done it. All right. Um, crappy football, as I said, and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it better. Every little thing that I tweak and turn in the tactic gets ignored by the max match match engine and i don't know why even if they are if i keep a tactic long enough so that they are getting familiar with it it's still i don't see anything happen of the things that i put in those like tactical instructions on team level or on player level it doesn't even care it doesn't even matter arezzo is man of match with 7.5 probably but, I mean, 
Oh man. Okay, dressing room. Let's just breathe, shall we? A good win, boys. And that is a big fat lie, but I'm gonna do it because I don't want to upset anyone. Uh, outstretched arms, a good win. Well done. Everyone's motivated. Oh man. Fan reactions. That was like watching men against boys. Hmm. Why can't we hold on to the ball for more than a couple of passes? Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Really pleased for Arezzo, of course. Happy for him, Arezzo. Great win for Stuttgart. No, no, I'm not convinced at all. But that does mean, of course, that we get a little bit of money and that we have ticked the board requirement for reaching the quarterfinal. Let's have a look at our schedule, shall we? Because we will probably be back. I'm not going to come back for the quarterfinal. Oh, I, I know when I'm going to come back. A, we have a European second knockout round in the Euro Cup in March. And we also have the youth intake in March. So I am not sure when exactly I will be back. Maybe for the Byron game. I don't know. But it will be in March. So guys, that was it for this episode. A pretty eventful episode as far as crappy tactics go, I would argue. Let me know in the comment section what you think, what I can do, what am I missing something? Uh, am I too experimental with the tactics and do I have to keep it simpler? I have no idea. Literally, I have no idea. If you enjoyed the episode though, give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, bang on that notification button so you will be notified if a new video drops so we can keep doing this thing together because I really need your help, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.